When I think of the most unlikely movie pairs that I actually find hilarious, Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston are definitely that pair, but I love it. This is 2019's murder mystery and it's the perfect reason why. Spoiler alert, while I might be giving you my opinion on the film, that's no substitute for watching it for yourself. Links to the film are in the description. Nick leaves a crime scene while his buddy Jimmy tells him about his new technology, and Nick tells him all about how he failed the detective exam again. Nick knows that he knows all of the answers, but for some reason he freezes under the pressure of the test. So Nick asks Jimmy if he'll have his wife ignore his lying about making detective when they all meet up for dinner that evening. Meanwhile, Audrey is fixing a client's hair and they are all talking about how romance is dead in relationships. She tells them that tomorrow is their 15 year anniversary and he still hasn't given her her dream vacation to Europe that he promised her. I promised myself a trip to Japan once I discovered anime, but but I still can't even get myself there. All the other girls are talking about how they don't get flowers or uber black rides to and from dates, but Audrey is really going all in about her expectations and promises. One of the girls tells her that she just needs to ask him, but Audrey tells him that she just doesn't want to have to ask him. Across town, Nick grabs a funny card, a $50 Amazon gift card, and some Claritin for Audrey. If that doesn't say true love, then I don't know what will. That evening at dinner, Jimmy tries to play it cool with all of Nick's lies, but his wife, Holly, isn't really into playing nice with Nick. Eventually, they end up having a great dinner and they all head home. While Audrey and Nick get ready for bed, she tries to get in his face about never making it to Europe. But Nick tries to play it off as if that was his big surprise this whole time. Sure enough, Nick gets them on a plane the next day and they are on their way to Europe. Nick embarrasses Audrey while they're on the plane, but after he passes out, she sneaks into the first class section. She ends up finding an entire open bar and the most comfortable seating arrangements possible. What she doesn't see is Charles Cavendish sitting in the corner. He startles her by calling out to her, but they end up talking about what she's doing on the plane. I can't see Luke Evans playing a good guy. It sounds bad, but ever since seeing him in Fast and Furious, all I can see is the villain. I feel like that's all all he does now anyways. He knows where his strength is. Also, I can't understand how Audrey expected to get away with just chilling in first class. Literally everyone heard and saw her on the plane with Nick. They know exactly where her seat is. Sure enough, an attendant tries to point her back to her seat. But after Charles says his name, the attendant leaves them to enjoy each other's company. Audrey is impressed with this reaction and she stays up there for some time. Eventually, Nick wakes up and he notices that Audrey isn't there anymore. Audrey finds out what Charles' plans are, and she finds out that his uncle is the billionaire Malcolm Quince. Just then, Nick decides to crash the party, and Audrey tells him all about Charles' invitation to sail around on his yacht. Nick isn't a fan of this plan, but Audrey tries to point out that this is the opportunity of a lifetime. When they land, they see what the bus experience looks like, and they quickly change their mind. What? Why? That bus is gonna be full of awesome memories! But then I see the yacht and I completely agree with their decision. This is one of the sleekest boats I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Once on board, we meet Susie, Charles' ex-fiance who is now marrying his uncle. After a quick little interaction, Susie leaves and they meet Charles' cousin Toby. Nick continues to show the kind of class that he is, but he just doesn't care. Once they are shown to their rooms, Audrey talks about how they are right in the middle of a TMZ story, but Nick couldn't care less. He's just impressed with the shaving cream made from coconut. Once they go back out on deck, they notice Charles arguing with Susie, but they aren't the only ones. The actress Grace Ballard is sun tanning on deck, and Nick couldn't be happier to see her. This man is so caught up. He gets points for quickly introducing his wife, but he definitely says the wrong name. It's one of those times where you wonder if he can really be held responsible for the jibber jabber that comes out of his mouth. Then Colonel Ulenga and Sergei show up and they aren't fans of the strangers. Audrey actually uses the words scary and eye patch in the same sentence and she expects Nick to not turn around. If he didn't turn around, I'd be more concerned about the lack of response 
to that sentence. Charles takes Nick and Audrey over to meet the Maharaja, and she ends up pointing out how bad of a shot Nick is. As a response, Nick throws out some flaws of Audrey's, and the yacht takes off. Later, the couple heads to dinner, and they meet Juan Carlos, who is racing in the Grand Prix tomorrow. Just then, Malcolm's helicopter lands on the deck, and the family dagger is brought into the room. After a theatrical entrance, Malcolm has the help leave so he can address everyone privately. During Malcolm's touching speech, he notices that he doesn't recognize Audrey and Nick, but he decides to let them stay to listen to what he tells all of the family. Malcolm tells all of his guests that he is cutting off all of the leeches and leaving everything to Susie. Just as he goes to sign the new will, the lights cut out and someone stabs him to death. The colonel actually removes and reinserts the dagger when Nick tells him to not touch it. How can you be a super old colonel and not understand basic police law? The Maharaja seems to be the only one that has the sense enough to leave things for the police. Nick has his priorities straight though. He grabs a gigantic platter of shrimp, has Audrey grab the cocktail sauce, and he has the room locked off. Perfect fake detective skills. When Nick and Audrey get back to the room, they enjoy the succulent shrimp, and Audrey tries to solve the mystery herself. Nick goes to sleep, but Audrey wakes him up to try and pick a suspect. Audrey thinks that there's some sort of complicated plot going on here, but Nick thinks that the most obvious suspect is the right one. Just then, another gunshot is heard. They run to see what's going on, and they find Toby dead on his desk, a little gun in his hand. In the morning, the yacht makes it to Monaco and Interpol shows up to question the suspects. The inspector asks everyone what seemed out of place and they all mention the Americans. That feels a little like they are being targeted. Obviously, someone is trying to frame someone else, but I'm beginning to think that it might not be Charles. Instead of being a villain, he might just be a crappy person. Once they sit down, Audrey asks the inspector more questions than he asks them, but he ends up calling out Nick for being a liar about being a detective. The inspector is so sure that they are the killers that he holds their passport so that they have to stay there so he can find the evidence against them. Nick assures him that he is going to rest because he's really tired, but after that, he's going to do everything he can to prove their innocence. Elsewhere, Juan Carlos gets ready to race in the Grand Prix, and Nick tells Audrey that whoever hates Malcolm the most is the one that is their killer. Everyone is a suspect, but Nick still thinks that Charles had a hand in all of this. When they get back to the hotel, Nick is carrying around a food platter again. This guy could be a spokesperson for hotels or shrimp companies, not to mention his iron stomach that keeps eating while dead people keep popping up. It's actually a little bit impressive. When they go back to their room, a note is slipped under the door that tells them to go to a certain room. Nick tries to make it clear that they aren't going to go, but they end up going anyway. When they get to the room, they creep inside and Sergei pulls a gun on them. Sergei makes them sit and he says that he can't keep the colonel's secrets anymore. Suddenly, he starts talking about how he lost his hand, eye, and a secret fiancé that no one has been talking about. Apparently, the colonel's fiancé ended up marrying Malcolm. Can't this guy get his own woman? He keeps stealing everyone else's. Jeez. As Audrey tries to bring up her voice memo to record this confession, a knock comes from the door. After Sergei hides them in the wardrobe, he answers the door and gets killed in the process. When the killer tries to come inside to finish the job, Audrey and Nick hop out onto the window ledge and shimmy across to an empty room. The room doesn't stay empty for too long, though. Within seconds, Grace and the Maharaja stumble in to make love. I'm not a fan of this almost sex scene. After the Maharaja shows a weak spot for connection, they leave the room and Audrey and Nick start cracking up from under the bed. The two of them head to a local restaurant and they find out that they are the most wanted criminals in the city. Audrey also finally finds out that Nick is definitely not a detective. Audrey storms out and she tells him to not follow her while she thinks about things. Soon Charles shows up to get Audrey out of Monaco, but Nick hides in the shadows. He grabs a couple burner phones and in the morning, he disguises himself to slip a phone in Susie's purse. Then Nick calls Jimmy to have him do a bit of detective work. Meanwhile, Audrey rides with Malcolm to his lawyer's office and after spotting Japanese medicine in the car, she heads inside to find Malcolm. I never expected a story this deep. Honestly, I didn't expect 
expect much in the way of story, just a bunch of random gags. This is surprisingly compelling. Suddenly, Audrey is jump scared by Nick, and she tells him her new idea for a motive after she punches him in the face. Just then, someone starts to shoot at them in the library, and after destroying the library, the two of them run out into the busy alleyway. They run into Juan Carlos, and he leads them to Susie, who ends up cornering them. Just then, Susie's partner shows up and kills her with a poison dart. As Susie slowly dies, Audrey tries to get the killer's identity. Nick and Juan Carlos chase after the masked villain, but he gets away. Later, Nick calls the inspector to tell him to come to Charles' villa, but once they get there, they find Charles dead from poison in his drink. They just can't catch a break, can they? Pretty soon, they're gonna be the only ones left. Just then, Audrey remembers that Nick called the inspector to lead him there, and Nick thinks that they should just turn themselves in. Audrey asks him why he lied about the detective test, and he just tells her that he was so embarrassed to admit it. But Audrey is sure that they can get through all of this okay. They decide to head downstairs to act like they know who the killer is while they address the other suspects. They essentially end up clearing everyone's name in the process, but when the inspector gets ready to arrest them, they realize one important factor. French inheritance law. Going with this theory, they put it together that Grace is the one that is responsible for all of this. They put all of the murders on her, and they point out that she is actually the bastard daughter of Malcolm. This doesn't really go how most murder mystery stories go, but it all ends up going well in the end. They spot the gash on her forehead that points out that she is actually one of the killers. She almost got away with it too. I feel like this should be the end of a Scooby-Doo mystery. History movie. After Grace is arrested, the remaining survivors drink and relax on the back porch, and Juan Carlos goes on his way. Just then, the Maharaja points out that Grace couldn't have done all of the murders because she was with him for one of them. Then, it dawns on Audrey and Nick that Juan Carlos isn't as innocent as he seems. He takes the inspector hostage and drives off in the police car. Nick spots a sports car in the driveway and he and Audrey hop in. What he doesn't remember is that the steering wheel is on the other side of the car, so Audrey drives a Ferrari through the villa streets until she finally catches up with Juan Carlos. Considering how the rest of this movie is gone, a high-speed chase with ACDC playing as a soundtrack just feels like the last thing I expected. To top it off, Audrey is the epic one driving this car better than in a James Bond high-speed chase. This is fantastic! After some kind words of motivation, Audrey tries to tap the back of Juan Carlos's car, but she ends up going under it and slingshotting it into a concrete pillar. Nick goes to get the inspector out of the car, and Juan Carlos holds him at gunpoint. Suddenly, the tour bus that they were going to take in the beginning ends up running over Juan Carlos. See, it would have been an exciting ending no matter which way they pick. Yacht or bus, it ends up in the same place. Afterwards, Nick and Audrey go on their actual vacation from the inspector on the Orient Express. Smooth one. And with that, the credits roll. I'm telling you, for some reason, Adam and Jennifer just sort of work. I definitely need more movies like this one. Give it a shot. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next and I'll see you in the next video.